Welcome to my Beehive newsletter design tutorial. Here I'm going to be showing you how to edit around the design and overall framework of your Beehive newsletter just so that when you do it once you can have it looking exactly like you want. It's pretty straightforward and of course if you want to try out Beehive I will leave my link in the description where you can try them out for free and follow along. Let's begin. So what you want to do when you're on the main dashboard here is go on over to the left and if you click on design it's going to bring down both of these right here. We simply want to click on newsletter builder. All right, so this used to be a different name, I believe. I thought it was maybe Design Lab. I could be wrong, but in case you've ever heard that name before, this is gonna be the same thing. So as you can see on the screen, we have all of the left side sections right here. And every time you click on one of these little arrows pointing down, there's gonna be plenty more that you can edit. The good thing about this is that this tutorial doesn't need to be too long because I'm gonna give you my strategy for going over and kind of just changing everything to you know how it looks. First and foremost, let's just go through some of these right here. We have background. What I recommend doing, and this is gonna be my strategy for everything, you can simply click on post background and change it around. Now there are gonna be times where you're like, I'm not sure what the outside background is compared to the post background. You would just simply go in, change it, see how it looks and go from there. So for example, we're on white right now, but if I go to red, we're gonna go, I don't think so, <laughs> okay? Uh, let's just go back here and keep it like that. Okay, so like corner radius, like for example, you're not always going to be able to see it depending on like what you have and if there's going to be a border thickness. It's just going to be coming to adjusting things, seeing how they look and so on and so forth. So this is going to be like spacing with the border. We have outer margins and so on and so forth. I'm going to go through body text here because this is going to be a big one. So we have font family. We have Helvetica. Let's say I wanted to change it to something like Georgia. And you're going to notice that change to Georgia right there. If you like that, that's fine, you can use it. If not, you know, change it back and go with it. What I'm gonna do is obviously keep my settings here in case you happen to like my overall layout. It's pretty standard, pretty simple, but I happen to like it. I think it looks good because the links are also blue and the majority of people who know and use the internet understand that if you see something that's hyperlinked or at least just has a color to it, it's underlined and it's blue, it's usually going to be a link. So an example here, we have our font size, say we want to make it like this. We go, that's too big, you know, and maybe we can go back over here, like a little bit too small, you know, go back to where it was on 16 and that's just gonna be like toggling with it, right? So moving down here, we have some space, we have the hyperlinks. So this is gonna be the example of the font and the underline color where almost good, they're not identical, but they're very similar. I like underlining it. You can also bold it if you want. And there you go, just to kind of see what it looks like, or you can undo it. I think it looks fine just the way it is, right? Because it pops out as it is, right? It, it stands out, which is good. We have header text here. So once again, font family, font weight, uh, the font size, the space between elements. If you're wondering like, what does this look like? If it's three pixels, let's just make it really big. And you're gonna notice it's gonna be that space right there. So I think the three is gonna be fine for that. And overall, I probably don't need to do too much more because this is just gonna be going over. It's just repetition, right? So this was for the header one. This is gonna be header two, as you can see here, and it has all the different headers. As you go down, they mostly get smaller, H3, H4. So that's gonna be header three, header four, header five. There's H5 right there, H6. A little farther down, it's gonna be the smallest, and just like that. So you're just gonna go through and kind of just go over the same thing here, changing around the font. I'd recommend if you're gonna use one font, probably keep most of them the same. You know, you can maybe change around the headers compared to the font family. It's gonna be email footer. We have buttons, styles, colors, borders, and so on and so forth. But this is going to be how you can actually set this up so that when it's done, you don't have to make any type of visual changes to your actual newsletters. Yes, when you create your newsletter, you are gonna to have to say, add some aspects in there, like you're gonna to wanna to add your own headline, you're gonna to wanna to add your own text, your borders, but obviously how the setup's going to be in terms of the spacing, say between your headers and your text, how your links look like, the colors of them, the borders, uh, you're gonna have your little notepad here, what that looks like, the spacing between each of the headers, once again, the buttons, the spacing there, all of this is gonna be good to go, so. I will just kind of go down here in case you want to look at the block quotes variants. This is going to be the background color, which we saw right about there. I think that looks good. Makes it look like a notepad, right? 
and there's going to be a bunch more with tables and beds. You don't have to go through and do everything, but if there's something you do want to change, I think this looks fine given the fact that it is a quote. It is a little bit bigger, so it stands out. That's like the author, which is going to be optional. And that's going to be the very quick tutorial just to show you how you can edit that around when it comes to the newsletter design. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Something you can also do is just look at some examples of other newsletters that you might like just to kind of get an idea of something that you can model. Not copy, but model, get inspiration from. Heck, if you want to use mine, feel free to. I love the standard and kind of basic look. It just gets the job done, in my opinion, anytime you're sending out a newsletter. People are going to know that these are links. They can click on them. And then, of course, anything else you want to add in there is going to be up to you. If you got any value out of this, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. If you reached this far, I will have a gift in the description where you can learn more about some great software tools for building and growing your online business. My name is James. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next video.